In uh, this lecture segment, we'll look at the read commands function that reads a command line and creates a list of command nodes representing it. Now, as we walk through the read commands code, let's use uh, the following here as an example command line. I'll copy it over into the notes as well. It's uh, substantially similar to the example in the prior segment, but it includes an input redirection right uh, there. Uh, I guess I should capitalize that to be consistent. Includes an input redirection. Uh, grep searches its standard input, by the way, if no file is provided, so this will work to grep the emails.txt. And it has only two pipes instead of three. Now, read commands starts by reading a blank delimited string of at most 100 characters. And that's uh, right there. If this exists, then read command uses it as the first command. Otherwise, it just returns null right off. Now, lines 72 through 73 here create a new command node, and they point both RTN and last command to it. Now, RTN is the head pointer will ultimately return from the entire function. But last command will point to the final command on the list as we read the line. So that starts by being the first command here. Similarly, last arg points to the last argument in the args list of the current command. So here's a picture of what we'll have after the line 72 and line 73. These two pointers make it easy to tack a new argument onto the end of the current args list or a new command onto the end of the current list of commands. Now, read commands uses fscanf and a passed in file pointer in. This uh, makes it possible to modify Minishell to accept commands from a file in the future. For now, though, we'll always be passing standard in to in. The rest of read commands operates word by word, taking each blank delimited word from the command line in turn. Words can be commands or arguments, but symbols like less than, greater than, and pipe also count. Now, lines 80 through 81 here skip any blanks, leaving the next non-blank in next care. If that is the end of the line, or it's an EOF, line 84, then we are done with the command line, and we jump to the test down on lines, line 107, and that in turn ends this loop reading through words. Otherwise, lines uh, 86 through uh, 106 decide what to do with the word. Now, just as a uh, reality check here on what I said, how many iterations will there be of this uh, word reading loop, the, uh, line uh, 79 to 107 loop, if we are reading in the, or if our, our command is the example command line up here? Coming back from a pause there, should be 11. Grep, sees daily, less than, that's three, emails, text, four, the pipe, five, sort, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven individual words in that line. And then the question number two, what's with this blank skipping on lines 80 through 81? Couldn't we just uh, use, say, f scan f blank percent c and get the next care that way? The space before the percent c would cause white space skipping. Why do we have to do it by hand? The answer is we want to end the command line when we see backslash n, uh, end of line. Standard fscanf whitespace skipping skips end of line as well as blank. And we want to put eof also into next care if we hit that. The standard fscanf wouldn't put an eof into the character being read in. And then finally, one related question. What does read commands do if the input line is blank. Does it return null in particular? I'm going to look up here for that. 
And answer three, coming back from a pause. No, actually, the F scan F on line 71 here will skip all white space, including returns, hunting through blank lines until it sees something to read or until it hits EOF. Now, let's take a look at line 87 here. That is true if the next character is a pipe symbol. And we'll cover that case in a moment. But first, let's cover the false case. If next care is not a pipe, it's either a redirect or an argument. In either event, line 95's ungetc puts next care back into the input so we can read the entire argument. This will also make it easier, by the way, to modify the code later for multi-character redirection tokens like greater greater or greater ampersand. Line 96 then reads the next word, including the first character of it. Lines 97 through 98 check to see if it is input redirection, and if so, they read the next word after that into, the, which presumably would be the input file name, into the relevant field of, of the current command. Lines 99 through 100 do the same thing for an output redirection. And then finally, lines 102 through 103 handle the default case of another command line argument, tacking it on to the end of the current args list and moving last arg to point to the new arg. These are the lines we'd execute next in our example, and we'd create a new arg then thus. And I should, by the way, have put in the value in the first argument. Forgot to do that. This is rep, of course. Uh, by the way, I did change the name to value from the first lecture segment, which had it as arg, which was confusing with args is also a pointer name. So uh, henceforth, it will be value for the name of the string in each arg. And then having read in uh, the uh, C Staley, we'd put that here. And we'd be changing the last arg to uh, point down to the new last argument. And of course, not least, we would change the one to two for num arcs. Okay. And then on the next iteration of the word reading loop, we'd hit the greater than sign, or less than sign, I'm sorry, uh, from our uh, input command line. And that results in reading emails text per line uh, 98 here into in file. Okay, quick question here for you. The real shell is tolerant of missing spaces in some cases. For instance, one may write sort greater out with no space between the greater than and the out, and the shell interprets that as sort greater than out. Does ours do this? And if not, what does it do? If you're following the logic of the thing, then our shell is quite dependent on space separators, and in the case cited, it would actually interpret greater out as a single command line argument uh, to sort, rather than a greater than uh, redirection. Okay, so we said we'd get back to the case of a pipe symbol. Let's return back to that now and see what happens, because that would be the next thing in our input. So if next care is a pipe, as it would be for our example here, then uh, lines 88 through 91, or 88 through 90 anyway, uh, scan for the new executable name of the next command, and then use this to create a new command, linking it to the end of the command list on line 89 here, and then updating last command to point to the new end of list by chained assignment on that line. And then line 90 updates last arg to point to the last argument of the new command. The result in our case here would look like this. Thus, with a new command linked in, uh, and with then last arg and last command updated accordingly. This may get a little cluttered, sorry. There's last command. And then down here, we'll have uh, last arg with the sort as the next command. Clean that up a little bit. Now, this is all it takes to handle a pipe at this point. The fact that one command follows another in the list 
will signal run commands to set up a pipe between them. So be sure you understand the data structures that we have set up here. Run commands will use them intensively. And it would be a good exercise, by the way, perhaps to just by hand complete them for the rest of this command line. 